Well, hey there, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I am your host, Janine Alley, and you are listening to Becoming the CEO of Your Life today. And today on the show, I'm super excited because we're talking about the exact soul satisfying process to become the CEO of your life today. I know that if you're listening to the podcast, you have built some level of success, but something feels like it's missing and is needed to help you to create more consistency and more growth and more of that feeling, that grounded feeling like I've got this. So if you're noticing that you aren't growing despite your efforts, maybe you've hired a coach, you've gotten into a program and you haven't quite gotten the results that you desire despite your hard work, I want you to know that something else is going on. And I know how frustrating this is because you're a good student. You show up, you follow the process to a T. If you're like me, you have studied how to execute the perfect webinar. You probably poured over the scripts. I'm sure that you've been studiously following people on social media to see what it is that they're doing. You probably pay really close attention to people's marketing funnels to see how things are supposed to be done. I totally get it. But despite your efforts to get it right, you feel like that you are now looking at a watered down vanilla version of your vision. You may have started to notice the psychological toll that it takes to meet external expectations that are not quite aligned with you, but you do them because it's the thing that everyone says will work, but you know inside that something feels off. What happens is we start to experience more self-doubt. We start to feel borderline burnout. We start to get apathetic about our vision when it all used to feel like fire, right? We used to feel unstoppable when we thought about what we are here to create and what we are here to do. And that feeling isn't here anymore. Often people mistakenly think that they've hit a plateau because of a systems or a strategy or a marketing problem. What I want you to understand is that you don't have a problem with systems or strategy. You have a problem with what I call inhibition instinct. This is often the missing link for so many women who are ready and able to make a difference, but aren't seeing the results that they desire. The biggest problem for women is that we are taught from a really young age in school that in order to succeed, we have to get good at following an external framework. I want you to just think about the school setting for a minute. We cultivate skill sets in conflict avoidance, self-censoring, people-pleasing, even speaking tentatively and acting tentatively so that we don't get in trouble, right? <laughs> but these skill sets do not transfer well into stepping into that CEO role of your life or your mission. In fact, studies show that women dominate in academics. Over half of professional graduate programs are women and over half of middle management positions and companies are also held by women. But less than 5% of CEO roles in Fortune 500 companies are held by women. So why is that? It's because those same skill sets that got you good grades in school are the same skills that have kept you from the success that you are seeking and that you deserve. So this is the truth. Every program, every system out there works and it doesn't work. And I'm not talking about for the slackers or the people who don't do the work. I'm talking about people like you, people who have put in the work. So think about this for just a second. You don't have a problem working hard, right? If someone else's process really worked and it was the thing, you should have the ongoing results that you desire by now, right? So what is it? What is going on? What's needed to get to the next level is unapologetic self-trust and unwavering conviction and the message you are here to share with the world and develop the confidence to challenge and change the status quo. And what we need to do is we need to do this in a way that feels good. And we do this by raising the floor. So here it is. Here is this new concept <laughs> that I am talking about. So let me show you what I mean. So as women, we have, like I said, cultivated these tools from the past, like people pleasing and avoiding conflict and holding back our true thoughts so that we don't rock the boat. We act cautiously and we trust other people at the expense of our own inner knowing. And that leads us to not only hustle, but to be invisible. And this perpetuates, like I said, that inhibition instinct. And because of this, we are often looking around ourselves for better ideas and next moves. This is why we meticulously study someone else's webinar script instead of just jumping on Zoom and just hitting go and just sharing what's from our heart. 
we try to execute someone else's strategy perfectly. And this is where the misalignment starts to happen because sometimes we do this at the expense of how we want to say something or how we want to do something. And over time, we end up hiding behind what we feel like we should do and our own voice becomes blocked. We end up feeling dissatisfied with a weakened, watered down version of the vision. And this leaves us often working harder than we need to, trying to do all of the things and wondering how sustainable our systems are long-term, right? It all feels misaligned. This is where that fatigue and apathy and self-doubt start to show up, right? So alignment is really key to rising above this experience. This is how we raise the floor. I've talked often about embodying your energetically aligned mission. This is what I mean. So let me just start off by defining what I mean by alignment, because this is a word that gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> so I want to make sure that this definition is really clear. So for me, alignment means closing the gap gap between intention and action, meaning the way that we dream about our lives or running our business versus the way that we actually do it. So this alignment, of course, is on our terms. It's not someone else's. So the further the alignment gap, the more dissatisfied we have with what it is that we're doing. We get out of alignment really quickly, of course, when we think we should be doing something a certain way. And yet at our core, it doesn't feel right. So when we're in alignment or super close to it, we are in flow. Things are so much easier and we feel that fire. So the way that we do this, like I said, is by raising the floor, by creating a bigger foundation for us to stand on through the two things that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So this is what I wish I had known. You don't have a problem with strategies or systems or marketing. You have a problem with inhibition instinct. Inhibition instinct, like I said, creates an alignment gap. Because if it were a problem with strategies or marketing or systems, you would have solved it by now right? But that's clearly not the case. So instead, what's needed to get to the next level is creating unapologetic self-trust and unwavering conviction and the message that you are here to share with the world. These are very intangible concepts. So I want to share with you today some tangible ways that we do this. And th both of these ways is how we create that bigger foundation. So the first thing that we need to do is create our core connection. Every woman listening to the sound of my voice has at her center unfailing perfect wisdom that is often diminished because we are conditioned to believe that other people have greater wisdom, they have better ideas, and a proven framework that is more valuable than the intelligence and the experience that we have inside of us. This doesn't put us on equal footing with our peers. We approach our projects and even our life sometimes from this place. But in order for you to take things to the next level, you have to learn how to connect to and rely on this wisdom because for you to play a bigger game, there won't or there can't be anyone there to check your work and say, okay, yep, you're on the right track because what you want to create and the way that you want to create it hasn't ever been done before. It's a process that is as unique and as incredible as you are, but you won't be able to level up if you're currently playing small and safe, hiding behind somebody else's expertise or formula or webinar script. Right? So we are here to share something really powerful and unique with the world. And yet often we disregard this connection that we have with ourselves to do this effectively. So you might even think that you're doing this, but you are not shining through. Your voice, your message, your unique energy is buried under someone else's process or framework. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't get input from other people. I understand the value of learning from other people. In fact, Coaching and mentoring are crucial to help us to move forward. I talk about this all the time, right? But you don't want to do this at the expense of the value and the education and experience and wisdom that you bring to the table. But we're not even creating a seat at the table for ourselves. Our inner voice is getting squeezed out and we end up downplaying or altogether ignoring our inner genius. And I call this the Claire syndrome, which comes from, of course, my favorite sitcom, Modern Family. So Claire is one of the, she's the mom in the movie and she's trying to take over her dad's 
closet business while he's still working there. He's kind of like one foot in, one foot out on retiring. And she's constantly second guessing her gut. She's looking over her shoulder and seeking approval from her dad to know the next best move. We do this in life. Like I mentioned, we are conditioned to excel in school by following external frameworks and respecting teachers or coaches and those with authority as having all of the answers. Those good student behaviors got us the ace on our exams, but they do a super crappy job of helping us to think outside of the box. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people making is that because they are go-getters and action takers at heart, they feel like success has to come from hard work. And because they expect it, they create it. They end up overcomplicating a process that could be fun, it could be liberating, yet they think this is just par for the course. And I know that you're here for it, but it's currently causing a lot of unnecessary hustle and pain, which doesn't allow you to shine through. And it's not enough for you to create your own framework. I know some of you have a framework, but what's missing is you, your personality, your flair, your energy, your vibe. It's you that's missing. We don't consider the possibility that we could create our own way of doing something and it could be wildly successful. And this doesn't just show up in your business, but in the way that you run your life. What you need to do instead is to create your core connection so that you can show up with unapologetic self-trust. This is a power move. This is where this comes from. And this is what is going to set you apart in a crowded market. This unfallible, exceptional wisdom doesn't ask us to hustle. It doesn't ask us to work harder or push to get results. Instead, it shows us a simpler, easier, yet highly effective and authentic way in order to move forward. This is exactly what I wish I had known 10 years ago when I got started, because when we trust ourselves, when we trust our gut, we end up being anchored in ourselves, not a specific process. You're able to add in elements that feel good to you and that keep that fire going. You get into flow and it create more ease and joy and fun in the process. So at the very heart of playing a bigger game is our ability to show up authentically, free from fear and growing more and more into the vision that you have to make a difference. And at your core, I know that you desire to be led by this resonant vision rather than to be pushed to achieve someone else's external markers of success. So this brings me to my second secret, another piece of your foundation to help you to raise the floor. And it's how to fuel your creative fire. Because what I want you to understand is that you are an energetic being. You want to learn how to activate, how to replenish, how to recharge your internal energy and take care of yourself in a way, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well, to support you and the work that you have to do in the world. Because you are an energy body. You're full of life. Light, you're full of vibration and thoughts and consciousness and emotions and spirit. So when energy circulates freely, all parts of ourselves communicate clearly and find harmony and balance. This is something that most visionaries put off or don't even pay attention to, right? They think, okay, when things slow down, then I'll be able to take care of myself. But the opposite of this is true. When I figured out how to raise the floor by focusing on connecting to my core and fueling my fire in the way that felt good to me and creating routines around these non-negotiables, even my worst days were better than the average of what I was doing before. We end up using less energy to get better results because we're not all over the place. We're not spending time recovering from big pushes or forced energy that takes a lot out of us. We've leveled up and we're able to generate and execute ideas with ease and attracts the right people to us. And because we're creating sustainable systems and energy, we have the clarity of mind to take care of what moves the needle. So let me give you an example of this. I probably mentioned this before on the podcast, but it's definitely worth repeating. So procrastination is a pattern of a dysregulated nervous system. We become dysregulated when our sympathetic nervous system is turned on. Our sympathetic nervous system is in charge of our flight, fight, or freeze. And when this is activated, we feel really busy because our insides are busy trying to manage stress or anxiety. And it seems like we have a hundred things to do when in reality, there are only two or three that need to get done in order to really move the needle. But when we're in the state, of course, we're easily distracted. We take passive action like checking our email or hopping on social, even 
even learning more information. These things don't really move the needle, but it feels like we're doing something. However, if we sit down to do the bid work, if we can get ourselves to do that, it takes us three to four hours to do an hour's worth of work and the content isn't even that good. I shared last week about an, about an experience that recently happened to me and I wanted to share it again because this illustrates perfectly what I'm talking about. So last week I had on my list to write five social media posts and I sat down and I could tell that I was dysregulated. I was feeling a lot of anxiety. I knew that if I tried to force or push the content to come through, it was going to take me a really long time. And so instead I worked on taking care of my nervous system instead. And I got going with my day. I didn't have any time to write in the morning. That's how I use that morning time. And by 5.30 at night, I still hadn't written, written these posts. And so I looked at the clock. It was around 5.30 at night. And I'm like, just sit down. Let's just see what comes through. And I even had to teach yoga a little bit later. And I hadn't even made dinner yet. And so I'm like, let's just see what comes through. And so I sat down with my pad of paper and my pen, and I wrote seven posts in less than 15 minutes. It was about 12 minutes. I could not believe it. It kind of blew my own mind, <laughs> but this is flow. And this is an extreme example of this, but this is where intention and action and energy align. It makes your life so much easier. The interesting thing about it is I went about my day before I sat down to write. I wasn't even worried about it. I knew that that information was gonna come through because I trust myself, I trust the process. So this is truth. You will never get to a point when things slow down or when we arrive and all of a sudden there is an abundance of time on our calendars or energy in our bodies. <laughs> you are an ideas person, right? So you wanna create a sustainable lifestyle as a creative where you are feeling good. This has to be generated from within you. The abundant energy and peace of mind you are seeking is available to you right now. So you've got to learn how to renew and recalibrate your energy so you can unleash your passions for all the things that you want to do. Don't overestimate the power of simplicity here. There really is simplicity on the far side of complexity. Every system in your body runs on energy and it's fundamental to the body. Balanced energy is working with the natural rhythms of the body instead of against it. And this has been my secret superpower all along. You guys know I have a background in wellness and fitness. I started teaching plant-based nutrition classes in 2007. I currently teach meditation and yoga. And of course, just like you, I have a lot of things going on. I built my business while I was homeschooling four kids. My husband has been deployed three times. Well, even while my kids were angsty teens, I wasn't just surviving. I thrived because I had created my own support and wellspring of energy. So in order to truly stand out and be sustainable, we need to learn how to wake up this life force energy. This helps you to really bring the fire and the light and the flow behind your creativity and behind your message. So if you are excited, I know other people are going to get excited too. This is what makes you magnetic. People will start to lean in. They're going to go out of your way to find you because you will be fired up and in the right headspace to create heart-filled, unique content with a lot more ease and freedom. So the secret to your success really boils down to becoming unwavering and to have this conviction about what it is that you're doing. So the framework or raising the floor supports that. We've got to create our own core connection. We have to fuel our creative fire and we have to embody our energetically aligned message. All three of these pillars help you to become cemented in your ability to execute your vision. You become unwavering and relentless and unshakable in building the dream and continuing to level up. Wavering is the number one dream killer, in my opinion. We feel like things should be done a certain way and we waver. We waver when we get distracted, we can't focus, we struggle with shiny object syndrome. We feel like things should be done a certain way, whether it's someone else's proven framework or even the original idea of our project. And when things don't go the way that we plan, we doubt, we get confused, we get distracted, we procrastinate, we lose the fire and then the vision starts to get fuzzy. Sometimes we lose the vision because our windy road takes a, cup, a couple of unexpected turns that we didn't anticipate. Instead of thinking, oh, okay, the original people or the original idea that I thought was going to unfold here isn't the way that this is turning out, I wonder how this is going to happen or I wonder who's going to fill these shoes instead. The vision itself starts to crumble. Like I said, we 
backtrack, we second guess, we get confused, and this takes time away from our progress. We all know that entrepreneurship and the creation process is a windy and crazy road sometimes. But when we're actually in the thick of it, experiencing the roller coaster ride of emotions, we start to doubt ourselves and what we're doing instead of objectively looking at what's going on and what else we could try. We get so hung up on the how, and yet we never know the how until after it's finished. So what gets you there? It's your unwavering belief. It's your ability to be unwavering in this process and this rock solid knowledge that it is done and I am doing it. And I wonder how it's going to happen. Becoming unwavering means that we playfully approach this process. You're, we're going to test a bunch of stuff and we're going to see what works. That's how we do it. We're going to stay curious and we're not going to be dramatic about it. The mind drama and the subsequent wavering is what's costing you so much time and energy and resources. And not only that, but it is sucking the joy and the life right out of your experience by taking these things so seriously or by creating someone else's method that ends up morphing so many times, we end up with a product that doesn't even feel like us anymore. I know this isn't what you want. Becoming unwavering allows you to play a bigger game, to stay connected to yourself through this creation process and have fun at the same time because you're willing to fail and learn over and over without wavering. So we see this in life, right? We've got two people talking. They're talking about the same thing. They are both selling mops at Walmart. One of the women who's selling mops is the Shailene Johnson of mops. She's super excited about the product. She thinks everyone should have one because they are amazing. She believes in the product because she uses it every day and it's been game changing, <laughs> as game changing as mops can be. Right. But the other woman, she's also selling mops. She also uses the product, but you've never heard of her before. And because she's worried about how she's going to do this, how many mops she's going to sell, she's worried about that guy from high school showing up and watching her sell mops. She is seriously rethinking her life choices at this point and I'm wondering if she's even cut out to sell mops. She is trying to use Shailene's process to sell the mops and she's not even Shailene. So who is going to do better, right? Same product. The difference is that unwavering energy behind the experience. This energy is magnetic. People are three aisles over and they are craning their necks around to see what it is that you're doing. And they're like, okay, I'll have what she's having. This is something that you can create. This unwavering, all-encompassing belief in who you are, what you know, and how you change people's lives becomes your super sexy superpower. At your core, what you need to be focusing on is building unwavering conviction in yourself and your belief in what it is that you do. It is not enough to implement strategies because you've done that. It's about truly embodying your energetically aligned message. Because I know that if you're here, it means that you're here to make an impact in this world. You want to do great things with your work. You want to make a difference and you want to leave your mark. So it's really important that it's not a lot about nuts and bolts or the framework. And thinking to yourself, okay, let me just get this system right or this marketing or strategy in place. It's about heart. It's about your heart and truly showing up as the elevated version of you so that you can elevate those around you. You can get them excited about what you do because you are truly walking the talk. You are embodying your message. You believe it and you live it and you breathe it. And that energy that you bring feels electric and it's inspiring to other people. It's all about connecting to your core connecting to that unfailing inner wisdom that will help you to connect to your message and to the things that you are here to do. Because when you get behind and around and underneath what it is that you're doing, you have more confidence and conviction in yourself, in your system, in your process, in your framework. You know exactly who you are, what you do, and how you change people's lives. You're not just randomly creating content or a business. You are doing things with intention, with empowerment, with heart, and with connection. Surrounding all of that is your belief and energy and the way that you are showing up. This is where the magic happens. It is from with inside of you. People think it's strategy or marketing, but it's not about that. It is about creating a project that truly embodies who you are and how you speak to the world and bringing that to life. This is a deep process. This is not about listening to a podcast on how to use the latest, hottest 
magic strategy and call it a day. It requires you to go deeper into understanding, okay, who am I and what do I stand for and what makes this unique and how can I truly bring my expertise and my experience and knowledge and energy to make the difference that I'm here to make. So what I do to support you through this process is something that I call the unwavering woman assessment. Now, this is not a strategy session. This is an actual deep process. We're going to look at where your hidden energy drains are, where you're not connected to your core, where you are not 100% aligned with your message, how you are wavering and how these things are connected for you. And I'm going to give you some very specific feedback on the exact things that you can do right away to be able to stand in your power and share the message of your soul with the world. So it's not some script. It's not some little process that is the same for everybody. And I say it's not No, that is not how I show up. I will literally evaluate your life. (laughs) So I'm going to take the time to look at the things that you have and to show you what your blind spots are that you're not even seeing for yourself right now and the opportunities that you have that are within your reach that are really simple and doable because it is more than words. It's about energy in which you are showing up and really making sure that you're showing up in the best possible way for your people. So if this is something that is interesting to you and you really want to understand more about it and how I can help you to really elevate that, and you are somebody who is highly committed to success and really determined to make a difference, I want you to reach out and book a call with me right now. You can go to janinealley.com forward slash CEO and get onto my calendar right now to book that call. It is a 15 minute process. It is very simple. It is very easy. It is not a sales call. I am beyond excited to be able to connect with you really, really soon and to help you to become unwavering and to get amazing results in the process too. So again, that link is janinealley.com forward slash CEO. I will see you guys there. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.